Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Has she been selected in accordance with the canons of this church? And do you believe her manner of life to be suitable to the exercise of this ministry? We certify to you that she has satisfied the requirements of the canons, and we believe her to be qualified for this order. Then will you be loyal to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of Christ as this church has received them? And will you, in accordance with the canons of this church, obey your bishop and other ministers who may have authority over you and your work? I am willing and ready to do so, and I solemnly declare that I do believe the Holy Scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be the Word of God and to contain all things necessary to salvation, and I do solemnly engage to conform to the doctrine, discipline, and worship of the Episcopal Church. Friends in Christ, you know the importance of this ministry and the weight of your responsibility in presenting Lynn Zobel for ordination to the sacred order of deacons. Therefore, if any of you know any impediment or crime because of which we should not proceed, come forward now and make it known. Is it your will that Lynn be ordained a deacon? Yes. And will you uphold her in this ministry? In peace, then, let us pray to the Lord. Oh. 
Ecclesiasticus. How different the one who devotes himself to the study of the law of the Most High. He seeks out the wisdom of all the ancients and is concerned with prophecies. He preserves the saying of the famous and penetrates the subtleties of parables. He seeks out the hidden meanings of proverbs and is at home with the obscurities of parables. He serves among the great and appears before the rulers. He travels in foreign lands and learns what is good and evil in the human lot. He sets his heart to rise early to seek the Lord who made him 
and to petition the Most High, he opens his mouth in prayer and asks pardon for his sins. If the great Lord is willing, he will be filled with the spirit of understanding. He will pour forth words of wisdom of his own and give thanks to the Lord in prayer. The Lord will direct his counsel and acknowledge as he meditates on his mysteries. He will show the wisdom of what he has learned and will glory in the law of the Lord's covenant. Many who praise his understanding will never be blotted out. His memory will not disappear and his name will live through all generations. Nations will speak of his wisdom and the congregation will proclaim his praise. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians. And all of us with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing clearly the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, light will shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. The word of the Lord.
not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is a table, or the one who serves? Is it not the one who came? But I am among you as one who serves. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Lynn Zobel has been called to the special ministry of servanthood. And in a few minutes, Bishop Lee will use this very phrase, the special ministry of servanthood to describe the life and work of a deacon. Now for many people, those words are not ones that come easily or roll off our tongue. We don't use the words serve or servanthood often in conversation. However, I can imagine that over the last few years, as Lynn has asked her family and friends to support her, and they have asked that familiar question, so what does a deacon do? She gave them her usual thoughtful response. Hmm. And then she said, I simply want to serve. In my experiences with Lynn over the past three years, and as Deacon Nancy Hills and I have walked with her through the Deacon Formation Program, I have heard Lynn clearly describe her sole objective, to serve God and to serve the people she meets through acts of love, mercy, and justice. Lynn has been preparing for this very day throughout her life. And these last three years confirm her call. That might explain why she's a little emotional today. This passage from Ecclesiasticus that Lynn chose for our service this morning describes what she calls her path to this day. Throughout the years, she has enjoyed strong relationships with family and friends. And during dark days, after losses of those she loved, Lynn found solace in the scriptures and guidance there. Today, we might read that passage from Ecclesiasticus through her eyes and recognize the way that God has lovingly brought Lynn to this very day, revealing to her the wisdom of the ancients and showing her just 
how those who answer that call to serve pray and are filled with understanding. We might imagine her uttering those beautiful words of the psalm. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. I shall keep it in all my heart. As Lynn discerned her path, she engaged with others in prayer. She sought the wisdom of the ancients, and she listened to family members and to friends. And what gives Lynn her unique character is that even during those most heartbreaking moments of her life, she has been willing to listen and to let God lead her toward a life of increasing service. And we know that the supreme focus on servanthood of the diaconate is difficult for many people to understand. And the answer to that question, what do deacons do, is often explained using the word serve, but that's not so satisfying. Perhaps it's more useful to explain that it is the substance of uh, this special ministry. And we might go right straight to the next words that Bishop Lee will utter in a few minutes. He will say to Lynn, you are to interpret to the church the needs, the concerns, and the hopes of the world. You are to assist the bishop and priests in public worship and the ministration of God's word and sacraments. And I'm quite sure that Lynn will agree to these statements without a pause, because she knows what she is called to do. I believe that God brings to the diaconate individuals who have been shaped by their experiences and shaped by the path that God has put them on. Many of these individuals have developed deep compassion for those who suffer, and they are often able to discern the ways that God is shaping their lives. How else can a person begin to interpret or explain or make clear to the church all these many needs and concerns and hopes of the world? Deep compassion is diaconal street cred I believe that. And this type of compassion is born of experience. It comes with the development of capacities and gifts that equip a deacon to love like Jesus, to serve like Jesus, to live like Jesus. Deacons know how to point all of us to the places where there is the greatest need, and they don't draw attention to themselves. I can't think of a single time when I heard deacons seriously argue over who is the greatest. <laughs> and I have some experience with this. Deacons are called to listen, to feel, to understand, to console, to humbly serve for the greatest good. Now, I know that Lynn likes to think of this ordination as a new beginning. She says that all the time. And I believe that as she is made deacon, 
she will become comfortable serving in the church and in the world in new ways. But I also believe that Lynn will continue to walk with her Lord and each day will bring new opportunities to feel deeply. She will feel deeply with the women that she serves in the prisons, with the young women who find themselves in life-altering situations, with all of those who feel helpless and hopeless. Lynn will continue to engage with others in compassionate ways, as if she is serving Christ himself. And today, she agrees to an expanded post-retirement job description. <laughs> today, Lynn agrees to serve as a deacon in the liturgy. Lynn will become comfortable at the altar among the assembly of worshipers because there too she represents the special ministry of servanthood. She will assist the bishop and priests in public worship and in the ministration of God's word and sacraments. Ormond Platter ring a bell, the modern patron saint of deacons, explains that through the words and actions of deacons, the messiness of human existence, filled with complexity, ambiguity, and contradiction, enters Christian liturgy. And Christian people present God's creation to God, for the salvation of all people. In this way, deacons reveal the tyaconia of Christ as God's agents in creation and salvation, God's face reflected in the faces of God's people. Lynn will soon join in service with a diverse community of deacons. These not-so-secret agents bring all kinds of gifts to the people they serve. Representing Christ and the church, these agents, these deacons, serving among us here in this diocese, symbolize the diversity of Christian ministry and the mission of the church in the world. As clergy colleagues, together with Lynn's family and friends, and with all the people of the church, let us support Lynn in her life in Christ let us support Lynn in her special ministry of servanthood. Let us pray for Lynn in the words of the psalmist, that she will be filled with the spirit of understanding, that she will pour forth words of her own, and that she will give thanks to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Let us tell of our trust in God's never-failing goodness in these ancient words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My sister, every Christian is called to follow Jesus Christ, serving God the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit. God now calls you to a special ministry of servanthood directly under your bishop. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are to serve all people, particularly the poor, the weak, the sick, and the lonely. As a deacon in the church, you are to study the Holy Scriptures, to seek nourishment from them, and to model your life upon them. You are to make Christ and his redemptive love known by your word and example to those among whom you live and work and worship. You are to interpret to the church the needs, concerns, and hopes of the world. You are to assist the bishop and priests in public worship and in the ministration of God's word and sacrament. And you are to carry out other duties assigned to you from time to time, at all times. Your life and teaching are to show Christ's people that in serving the helpless, they are serving Christ himself. My sister, do you believe that you are truly called by God and his church to the life and work of a deacon? I believe I am so called. Do you now, in the presence of the church, commit yourself to this trust and responsibility? I do. Will you respect and be guided by the pastoral direction and leadership of your bishop? Will you be faithful in prayer and in the reading and study of the Holy Scriptures? I will. Will you look, to Christ, look for Christ in all others, being ready to help and serve those in need? I will. Will you do your best to pattern your life in accordance with the teachings of Christ so that you may be a wholesome example to all people? I will. Will you in all things seek not your glory, but the glory of the Lord Christ? May the Lord, by his grace, uphold you in the service he lays upon you. Amen. Whatever's comfortable. That's fine. Would you like a cushion? Okay. I 
Merciful Father, we praise you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, who took on himself the form of a servant and humbled himself, becoming obedient even to death on the cross. We know that whoever would be great must be servant of all. We praise you for the many ministries in your church and for calling this your servant to the order of deacons. Therefore, Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, Give your Holy Spirit to Lynn. Fill her with grace and power and make her a deacon in your church. Make her, O oh Lord, modest and humble, strong and constant to observe the discipline of Christ. Let her life and teaching so reflect your commandments that through her many may come to know you and love you. As your Son came not to be served but to serve, may this deacon share in Christ's service and come to the unending glory of him who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let this deacon be vested according to her order. Lynn, receive this Bible <laughs> as a sign of your authority to proclaim God's holy word and to assist in the ministration of all the sacraments. 
Amen. Amen. Dear friends, will you join me in acclaiming the newest deacon in the church? Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. I'll lean away. <laughs> peace. peace be with you. Peace. Gary, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be great. Peace, everybody. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace, Mr. Dean. Be with you. Please be seated. Well, welcome to All Saints on this great and glorious day. I'm Kevin Carroll. I have the privilege of serving as the Dean of the Cathedral. We'll soon be getting ready to celebrate Holy Communion, and it is the tradition and the practice in the Episcopal Church that all baptized Christians are welcome to receive communion because it's not a Catholic table or a Protestant table. It is the Lord's table. We are using individual cups for communion. Um, we're trying to maximize your safety. And to that extent, um, we are masking in this church. And if you didn't hear my announcement um, before you came in, I'm sure the ushers will be happy to give you a mask if you don't have one. At our church also, the first will be last, and the last will be first. We begin communion in the back. <laughs> and then come up and follow the green dotted lines around <coughs> to the communion rail. And just because you're sitting on that side of the church, doesn't mean you have to go to that side of the rail. Just fill in as you go across. There is a collection plate in the back. It is the tradition at ordinations that the collection goes to the um, newly minted deacon's discretionary fund. And there's always more need than resources. Uh, we use these funds to help people in all kinds of need. So feel free to leave. Um, our prior bishop always used to say, make sure that this is a quiet collection. And I never knew what that meant until I asked him one day, what do you mean, quiet collection? And he said, no coins, just bills and checks. And so, <laughs> let's take up a quiet collection this morning. Um, there will be a reception following this service. Where, where do we decide, is it inside or outside? Inside. Inside. So the, there'll be um, refreshments in the guild hall, which is down this, go through this door, down to the end there are restrooms on the right as you pass the first staircase if you need to avail yourself of them. And as you pass through, you'll notice that there's a few books scattered around. <laughs> Next weekend we start, I think, as our 35th annual Great Hunger Book Sale. All the proceeds of this sale go to feeding programs throughout um, the, the region and some national and international programs. Last year we made about $25,000 on this sale. And so please feel free to come back and avail yourself of books. And the really good thing is they're inexpensive. And then you can bring those ones back next year and get some more. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them for your by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. He gave thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from presumption of coming to this, ta this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us with the holy food of the body and blood of your Son, and for uniting us through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacrament. We pray that Lynn may be to us an effective example in word and action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Grant that we with her may serve you now and always rejoice in your glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Our help is in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <coughs> the blessing, mercy, and grace God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.